a new topic. Well, it's still probability. I want to talk about so called conditional probability. The name doesn't give much of a clue, but here's the concept we're after. For a couple of events, say A and B, we want to talk about the probability of event A. Yeah, but given the extra information that event B occurs, Well, this will get, be written probability of event A given B, written with this horizontal line like this. And to show what I mean, suppose we have some population. Uh, And the probability of being color, colorblind, the probability if you pick someone at random in this population that he or she has a color deficiency serious enough to be called colorblind, might be, what would say, three and a half percent. That's fairly realistic. But if you're given any additional information, Suppose we're told that the person chosen is male. So we're given the event consisting of the male population. Well, that changes things. Uh, color blindness is much more common in males than females. It might be six and a half percent. Uh, what if we're given the compliment? Color blind. But given the event that the person chosen is female, well, it's apt to make a big difference. Um, perhaps in this population, the probability of being left-handed is, so say, 10 percent. It's the right ballpark. Ah, but if we're given additional information, they were told that the event of being male occurred. Might make no difference whatever. It's the probability of being left-handed is about the same in males and females. Well, we want to build this into our system in a way that we can do some calculations. So we need to define in equation form just what I mean by the probability of one event given some other event. So to explain the definition, let's draw the picture, uh, say some sample space. Uh, events A and B. Being given B, well, means that now B becomes, in effect, the new sample space. We can ignore everything in B complement. Yeah. B complement might as well not be there. What we have now, okay, in enlarged form, we're just interested in outcomes that are in event B. And if event A is going to occur, 
it's going to, we'll need an outcome that's in both A and B. B comes the new sample space. And we have to rescale our probabilities. After the probability of B given B has to be 1. So here's how we do this. We define the conditional probability This now becomes a technical term for us, the probability of, of event A given event B A given B the probability of being that we have both A and, of course, B, but then rescaled. We divide this by the probability of B. And for this to work, the probability of B has to be non-zero. So, what becomes of the event A for an outcome to have event A occur, it'll have to have both A and B given B. And we divide by the probability of B to rescale things. Now, before looking at at a particular problem, let me rewrite some consequences of this definition. If we multiply through by the de denominator over there, we can say that the probability of getting both events A and B is a certain product. First of all, you've got to get B. And then given B, you've got to get A. Or for that matter, A and B, the intersection of A and B is the same set as the intersection of B and A. Right? It's the set of outcomes that are both in A and in B. It's the same set. And if you look at it that way, the probability of getting both, well, yeah, first of all, you've got to have A happen. And then, given A, you've got to get B. Well, so when we're using this definition, we can use it just as well in either, either of these forms. And let's look at the following problem, which we've seen before. Uh, on the first day, a certain disease affects 1% of the population And there's a certain test for this disease. The test isn't perfect. Let's assume, perhaps unrealistically, that it's at least perfectly sensitive. If you give it to someone 
with the disease. The test always comes, comes back positive. The test says, yes, that person has the disease. So there are no false negatives. But it's not, the test is not perfectly specific. Given to a healthy person, the test might give a false positive. For a healthy person, there's a one-tenth chance of being positive. So it's positive one time in 10. And then we're going to ask some very, look at some questions in a minute. But part zero of this problem is to take these sentences we've just written down and write them as equations. The, the fact that the disease affects 1% of the population is telling us a certain probability. We imagine choosing a person at random from this population. The probability that the person has the disease is 1%, percent one. D is the event of having the disease. So it's a set of outcomes. It's a set of people in the population having the disease. And those other two sentences in equation form. It's the probability of testing positive well, I don't want the letter P because we use it for other things, so we'll write it like this. Given that the person has the disease, that's one. The test is perfectly sensitive, we're pretending. The probability that it comes back negative is going to be zero. Uh, But the probability of being positive when you give it to someone without the disease, so we're given the event D complement. So that's the event that the person that we've chosen is, is in fact healthy. He does not have the disease. That's point one, one tenth. For somebody without the disease, we get a positive one time in 10. So we choose a person at random from this population. We give this person the test. What's the probability that the test comes back positive? Well, we've got the two events here, um, four things that can happen. That's multiplication principle. Let's draw the, the tree form. We choose this person out of the population. As far as the disease goes, there are two things that might happen. Perhaps the person has the disease and perhaps not. We get either the outcome is in the event D or it's in the complement, and we know the probabilities for these. 
probability of having the disease is 0 0.01. Well, and so by one of those properties of a probability function, the probability of the complement is 1 minus that. The 0.99 probability the person doesn't, does not have the disease. We give the person the test, which is either positive or negative. And we know the probabilities. That is, given that the person has the disease, the probability of a positive test is simply one. That's the second equation here. Well, so there's zero probability of a, of a negative test. But if the person doesn't have the disease, we're given the conditional probability. For a person without the disease, the probability of a positive test is 0.1. So there must be a 0.9 probability of a a negative test. So let's write down the probabilities for the intersection using those equations. The probability of having the disease and testing positive. Well, first of all, a person has to have the disease, 0.01. And then given that the person has the disease testing positive, that's probability one. Well, so nothing much happened there. It's still 1%. But the probability of not having the disease and testing positive is. Well, using those equations that the top of the left-hand board there. First of all, this person has to not have the disease, has to be decomplement. That's 99%. And then given that decomplement, the probability of a positive test is 0 0.1. This is 0 0.099. Yeah, but that's not what the problem asked. We want the probability of a positive test. Yeah, but the event testing positive breaks down into two parts, positive and healthy and positive and not. Well, let's write it down. Positive and having the disease, or positive and not having the disease. And there's no overlap between those, because D and D complement don't overlap. So the probability of a positive test we have in our tree here we know the probability of testing positive and having the disease we know the probability of testing positive and not having the disease probability of testing positive we just need to add these up positive and having the disease, we've already worked that out. Positive and not having the disease, we've worked that out. Point 0.109 is the probability that this person is going to test positive. 
10.9, almost 11% chance of testing positive. Well, now some new information. The lab report comes in, the person tested positive. Now what's the probability that this person has the, the disease? Before the test came in, the probability of having the disease was 1%. Yeah, but, but it's gone up, of course, because we have this positive test. Has it gone up to 1? Well, no, because of their false positives. But we have the inf all the numbers we need to answer this question. We're asking for a conditional probability. The probability of having the disease given that there was a positive test. The probability of a positive test given the disease, that is, if you switch the order around, yeah, that's one, but this is a different question. Positive probability of D given the positive test. Well, we know the definition of a conditional probability it's the probability that we get both of these events divided by the probability of a positive test. That's our definition that we wrote down for conditional probability, right there. And we know both of these numbers. Having the disease and testing positive, there it is, 0.01. Yeah, but we have to rescale because we have the population now of the people who tested positive. And the probability of testing positive, 109. Well, uh, it's about 1 in 11. Well, it's 1 out of... Ten point nine. Um, okay, so I did this division. It's a little bit more than nine percent, nine point two percent. The fact that this person tested positive for the disease means there's a nine point two percent probability that he actually has the d disease. Because after all, if we look at the people who are testing positive, yeah, a lot of these are false positives. Well, before leaving this problem, let me make a... Two events, so we have four possibilities. Um, might have the disease or might not. The test could come back positive or it could come back negative. And we've worked out various numbers here. The probability of having the disease and testing positive, 0 0.01. Probability of having the disease uh, and testing negative, well, that we assume that's zero because the test uh, is, is perfectly sensitive. Probability of not having the disease and testing positive, 0 0.99. Uh, that leaves some probability of not having the disease 
and testing negative, we didn't work that out. That's 0.99 times 0.9. Point nine nine to B and D complement, and then given that it's in D complement, the probability of testing negative is point nine. So, well, so so that's uh, eight nine one. And if we add across, yeah, there's that probability of having the disease. If we add these two numbers, point nine nine, the probability of not having the disease. We can add here, which we did to get the probability of a positive test. And we know the probability of a negative test. So there are four things that can happen. We know all the probabilities. Well, end of this problem, let's go back to uh, conditional probabilities in general. Uh, a few properties of conditional probabilities. Well, some extreme cases. the probability of A given A. Well, that's one, of course. But let's check that that follows from the way we defined conditional probability. We have, says we take the intersection and we're given event A. Yeah, but A intersect A. Yep. The definition tells us that this is going to be 1. And uh, probability of A given A complement. Given that the event A does not occur, now the probability of A is zero. And again, our definition gives us that. If we plug in these two events, now we have the probability of A intersect A complement. But the intersection of A and its complement is the impossible event, which has probability zero by condition two. The, uh, the same reason the probability of A complement given A is zero. The probability of event A given well, given the sample space, the sample space is an event, it's the certain event. But being given the sample space is not much of a gift, right? or it's just the probability of A. Because A intersected with the set of all possible outcomes would just be the set A, and the probability of the sample space we know. Well, so these are extreme cases. Can we, slightly more interesting. Okay. Suppose we're given event B. The probability that A does not occur Claim would be one minus the probability that it does occur. 
given the event B. That is, our rule that we had for complements of events extends to conditional probabilities. If the probability of being colorblind, given that the person is male, is six and a half percent, then we know right off the probability of not being colorblind given that the person is male. Six and a half percent of the males are colorblind, the other 93.5 percent are not. And well, to run that into the ground, uh, a more detailed derivation from our definitions. Well, we can say the following. We know that the event B we can split the event D into two parts. It consists of the outcome the event B into two parts. It consists of the outcomes that are in B and also in A. And then there are the things in B that aren't in A. Yeah, but these two parts make up all of B, right? We've covered all our bases. And there's no overlap between the two, because A and A complement have, have nothing in common. So by property three, 3.1. The probability of B can be written as the sum of these two probabilities. Okay, let's try that again. Probability of B can be written as the sum of these. So if we divide through by the probability of B, What we have, first of all, here is just the probability of A given B, right? Our definition of conditional probability. And what we have here, compare this with the definition of conditional probability, it's the probability of A complement given B. And these two have to add up to one. And that gives us the equation. And it gives us another one. A given B would be one minus probability. It gives us this other equation. Well, let's look at another example. So, where we have certain partial pieces of information, 
and then we need to look at the probabilities. So we imagine a a population in which people have one of the following four blood types. A, B, A, type A, B, and type O. And each person has one and only one of these four blood types. So there's no overlap between these events. Type A, keep the number simple, 30% of the population type B and 40%, type A, B, and 10%, and type O and 20%. Check, these add up to 100. And we're interested in a particular abnormal protein It occurs sometimes, but it differs for depending on the blood type. So we have a bunch, four more numbers. Ten percent of the blood type, blood type A people. And there's numbers for the various other blood types, and they're all different. 50% of blood type B people, so it's a lot more common among type B. 20% rate right in type AB, only 5% in type O. Well, suppose we choose a person at random. What's the probability that he or she has this abnormal protein? Well, so we will, we're going to calculate this. Now, we're, we're, we're given eight equations here. Well, they're perhaps not written as equations. For if we choose probability of A, probability of B for a chosen person, probability of type AB, yeah, not to be confused with the intersection or anything. It, it's just A, B is another event. And type O. That's an O, not a zero. So th this information gives us four equations. And we have the four more equations in the form of conditional probabilities. Let's write those down. The probability of the abnormal protein, given that the person has type A blood, is 10%. And so forth. Type B, it's a 50-50 thing. Uh, type AB, we're given that. Type O, it's only 5%. Yeah, but what we want is the probability of having abnormal protein. Well, 
we've got these four blood types. Either the abnormal protein occurs or it doesn't. Two possibilities. There are eight things that can happen, but what are the probabilities? Well, let's draw a tree. We choose this person at random. He or she is in exactly one of these four events. Every, each person has one and only one of these four blood types. And we know the probabilities. 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Uh, 0.1 and 0.2. And then the person either has the abnormal protein or else doesn't, and we're only interested in so far in the case where the person does. Well, given that the event A the probability of the abnormal protein is 0.1. Well, so there's a 0.9 chance of that it doesn't happen. And so if we multiply these, we find the probability of <clears throat> abnormal protein and event A. Well, so first of all, event A has to occur, and then we need the abnormal protein given A. That's 0 0.3, 0.1. Yeah, 0 0.03. We don't need those parentheses. 0 0.03 probability of having the abnormal protein and blood type A. Well, we're one quarter of the way through this calculation. The probability of having the abnormal protein and type B, um, what was the conditional probability? 0.5. Given that the person has blood type B, there's a 0.5 probability of the abnormal protein. So again, we just multiply these out. There's a 0.2 probability for the intersection. Um, and so forth. And all together, OK, so I could fill in these numbers. Uh, a, B, 0.2, 0.05. Ah, but the question is, what's the probability, not the conditional probability, just the flat out probability that someone chosen at random from this population has the abnormal protein? We get that by adding up these four numbers. OK, 
Okay, so we add that those up, we get 0.26, right? 26%. And we can add them up because we have these four events, no two of which overlap. The event of having the abnormal protein is the union of the following four events. No two overlap. Abnormal protein in blood type A, abnormal protein in blood type B, and so forth. So to get the probability, we add, and add them up. New information. What if we're given, we're told that the person had the abnormal protein. Well, that blood type B has the highest rate here. What's the probability that the person chosen has blood type B? Yeah, before we were given the extra information, the probability of blood type B was 40%. Yeah, but now we have new information and we're, we want a conditional probability. Blood type B, given that there was an abnormal protein. And we expect it's gonna be more than, uh, more than the 40%. Well, what exactly is it? By the definition of conditional probability, it's the inter probability of the intersection, blood type B and the abnormal protein, divided by the probability of our new sample space having the abnormal protein. And both of these numbers are on the board somewhere. We just have to find them. The denominator is down here, 26%. The numerator is right here, the probability of, uh, right, right here, okay. here somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, the probability of having the abnormal protein and blood type B. Um, point two. And okay, to two significant rounding that off to two significant figures. Yeah, it's gone up to seventy seven percent. Well, so we want to be able to do problems like this. Okay, gotta stop for today. <laughs>